All right, hello everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started for today. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, I know that the midterm is due tonight. So for those of you who are watching the recording later on, hope you finished it, hope you did a great job, um, had some fun working on the project. And same to all of you, I hope that it's been going well. If you need anything tonight, feel free to message on Slack, even if it is like 11 p.m., like we are happy to help. Um, and I hope that you've been having a good time working on these projects. So thank you for coming today. Uh, we're going to be talking today about auto layout, content driven design, and Figma plugins. So this is actually a pretty, um, I guess we're going into the advanced part of the course. This is officially more than halfway through the course and a little bit more than halfway through the semester. Um, and we're going to be talking for the next couple of weeks about auto layout, um, advanced components like Smart Animate and things like that, and then illustration. So these three topics are going to be a little bit more complicated or a little bit more nuanced. Um, and so we're gonna be doing a lot of demo related stuff today. Um, and we encourage you to follow along with the links that we're gonna show in just a second. So attendance for today is the same general bit.ly format as per usual, FD SP23 LEC7, or you can scan this QR code. It is gonna be the same every week and hopefully it hasn't been too much of an issue in the past few weeks. I know there was a little bit of troubleshooting in the beginning part of the semester, but I think it's been a little bit better now. Um, so leave this up for a second, but hopefully you got the gist of it, but it's bit.ly slash FD SP23 like seven. Um, and then the slides for today, we're going to share the normal one that you can generally copy, but I'm also going to share for those of you who are in the room today, this is a direct link to the actual file that I will be working in. So if you want to watch what I'm doing on your own computer, you're welcome to go to this link. Um, instead of the one that we usually have. So the one that we normally have is this one where it's figma decal dash like seven. Um, and the one that I'm going to be working on today is this figma.fun link. Sorry for all the different URLs. And then it's capital Y R H lowercase K capital Z K. Um, I'll leave this up for a second if anybody wants to follow along. Uh, you won't be able to edit it, but if you want to, I can give you permission to edit on this file. For those of you watching the recording, uh, probably don't use this file because it'll be several days after me actually working on it. Any issues with this? Anybody having trouble? Uh, thumbs up if this is working for you. Any problems over here? It's working? Okay, awesome. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and get started. If anybody filters in later, ask somebody around you if you want this link or Dia, if you are able to write it on the board in a little bit, that would be helpful as well. Cool. So we'll go ahead and, oh, sorry, here's the link. <laughs> Um, figma.fun slash capital Y-R-H lowercase k capital C-K. So we'll go ahead and get started for the content today. Um, auto layout is going to be pretty demo heavy again. Uh, so we encourage you to have a copy of this file open on your own computer if you would like. Um, so the idea behind auto layout is dynamicism and responsiveness. Um, auto layout essentially likes to create content that responds to the size of the screen, to the way that it's reacting, the way that you'd want, say, like a mobile browser or a web browser to react if you resize the screen. And the same idea goes behind how apps are able to work across any smartphone size, not just like every app is designed for like the iPhone 6. That wouldn't make any sense. And so Smart Animate, uh, sorry, Auto Layout is, good, is gonna be what allows you to have stuff that um, reacts to the kind of sizing that you have on your screen. It's essentially a property that you can add to frames and components that lets you create designs that grow, fill, resize, shrink, Anything like that as the contents change, and it's helpful to add new layers, accommodate longer text, anything that kind of moves or changes or is dynamic in your designs. So some examples of what you're able to do with auto layout just in a nutshell. First, we can see this idea with buttons, where if you have auto layout in a button, it'll resize the same way that kind of your text box is resized as you're text, uh, typing inside of them. Without auto layout, things are going to be static. Um, the same goes here in the, uh, the center example, where you can create menus and lists that are quickly reorderable. Um, so the idea here is that sometimes you're going to be mixing things up as you're designing. You want to be able to pr preserve the space between different objects. You want to maintain all of the um, uh, properties that you have in the layout itself. The same idea goes behind that kind of smart selection with the pink handles that you might be seeing if you're just normally re uh, moving objects around. But by implementing auto layout with those objects, it'll be more structured within the design work itself. Um, and the third example that you would see the most commonly is this responsive component idea. So this is something like a Twitter feed, where if the column gets wider or narrower, um, all of the content responds to that. So getting started, um, the main idea that you want to remember with auto layout is the shortcut is just shift A, or you can press the plus button in the right sidebar. So when you select an object or a group of objects where auto layout is applicable, there's going to be a small section in the right sidebar that allows you to add it. So if I go to this example, I just opened up a couple of these slides and I select a few of them. 
uh, auto layout is right here in the side and I can press the plus button um, to add that property to the set of components. Um, when you do this, what it's going to essentially do is apply any of these properties. We're going to kind of run through them before we go through the demo. So uh, the main idea that you want to think about with auto layout is direction. So it's laying it out automatically, either horizontally or vertically. Um, this is going to be along the x-axis or y-axis. You can see in this example that these little card times um, are auto layout um, horizontally so that you have one going from the left to the right. As you add more of them, they populate over to the right. At the same time, there's a kind of nesting going on here. So we're adding it into a card that has vertical auto layout where you can see kind of abstractly, it has this image, it has this line that says Brutals and Tor, it has this piece of text, and then we're adding those cards. So we have this nested um, property of the auto layout directions here. One of the annoying things about auto layout is that it can only be all horizontal or all vertical. It doesn't have a built-in grid system well. Spacing is that idea of the space between objects. You might see this when you're doing smart select, like normally when I have a bunch of things selected, you have those pink handles that appear, we can change the width between the objects. But by doing it through auto layout, um, it becomes a more hard encoded property that you can change with numerical values, um, and which is persistent when you have it deselected, unlike with smart selection, where it must be selected for it to be applicable. Um, the nice thing about auto layout is that it has a lot of very helpful iconography. And so if you forget anything that I've said today, which is entirely fine, um, you have all these little icons that kind of indicate what you're changing and what's being moved. So this is the horizontal space and this is the vertical space. This is only going to be able to go in the direction that you have um, it set to, as we said here. Padding is another really helpful thing with auto layout that you can't normally implement in anything else. So this is an idea with the button. This button auto layout is essentially one piece of text. There is no rectangle behind it. It's just the frame itself that is the padding. Um, so the frame here is set to white with a black outline and the padding is being changed. And we say padding, that means the space between the content and the box that it sits inside of. Um, that can be manually changed in auto layout. You can change it on one side. You can change it on all four sides, just the left and right, just the top and bottom. Um, it's going to be represented here. And then a little bit of a, nest, a hidden feature is that you can modify um, all four sides manually by clicking on this little icon right here. So again, padding is the idea of the space between the content and the container that it's sitting inside of. Alignment, um, you might be familiar with also in things like text and things like um, the alignment properties that you've seen up here. This is how to align child objects within the auto layout frame. So in this example, we have this one auto layout child that is a list of three items. So that is one big container that has three things in it. That big container is an even larger container of this giant white frame. The alignment here is setting where that set of three items goes inside of that frame. So we can see the alignment um, is pretty visual right here with this three by three grid. Um, it'll uh, copy whatever you have selected in that particular section. Distribution, this is something that took me a little bit of time to wrap my head around because it kind of, um, refers to the way that objects are going to be moving inside of a frame, the way that they are distributed. Um, there's two main properties here. One is packed and one is space between. The idea with packed is that you want them as close as you say you want them. So if I say I want these packed with five pixels in between them, they're gonna stay nice and tight like sardines. Whereas if you say space between, I want to say, I want them to fill up this container even if I change the size of the container. So space between is gonna redistribute all the objects um, based on what you say, uh, the width of the container they're inside of is. Like if you filled something up with water, that's going to be doing, I guess, space between. Whereas if you fill it with solid objects, it would kind of be packed. Um, in this example, there are two different ways that you can interpret packed in space between. In this, there are five distinct items, the filma and then the four navigation options. When it's set to space between, they are evenly distributed. But in this, these four are one object that have been put inside of their own container. So space between moves all of this to the right side. That makes sense. And so this is five objects, and this is just two, even though it looks kind of separate. Um, resizing, uh, I know this GIF is going to kind of run a couple of times as I talk, but Angelina did a really good job in this GIF. If you have the slide open, I would read through what it's saying here as well. Um, it, can, it has a little bit of nuance here as well with uh, the way that it's applied to either the container or its children. Um, so resizing, again, is the idea of adaptability and the idea of responsiveness. When I change this width of this window, what happens? Um, there are three main things to keep in mind here. All these examples are horizontal, but they apply vertically as well. The first is hug content. This is referring to the parent. The parent is hugging the children. Um, so that means that the larger container that all of the objects are inside of is going to resize according to how much space is between those children. 
Um, so you can imagine yourself hugging something if there are, I don't know if this is a really good example because I guess you wouldn't hug a bunch of different objects that are moving, but my arms would be wider if they were standing further apart and they would be closer if they were together. Um, so I am the container, I'm hugging the content. So I resize based on what the children tell me to do. Um, in contrast, you have fixed width or fixed height where I say my arms are like this big and you guys can assemble between me however you want, but my arms are staying at this size. That's what fixed width is doing here. So you can see this example um, even though we're changing the space between these objects inside, the larger container is still that exact rectangle size. It doesn't change. It doesn't care about the children inside of it. Um, the last one is fill container. This is applied to the things that are inside the parent. So not um, the larger container itself, but the objects inside of it, where when I change the size of the container, um, the objects inside of it are going to move with me. So um, this is like, if I say, uh, what is it? If I say jump, you say how high. That's what fill container is. Um, is the idea that the children are going to listen to whatever the larger container is saying. Um, constraints are going to be similar to the constraints that we had with normal frames as well, but we want to reiterate some ideas here that might have been unclear before. Um, there are three main things and constraints that I personally get confused sometimes, so we're going to kind of lay it out here. The left, right, top, bottom constraints are saying that um, I'm going to be this many pixels away from the left, the right, the top, or the bottom. Um, however, the left and right and the top and bottom properties are a little bit different. Those allow sizing. Um, so I'm going to do a really basic example that isn't actually with auto layout, but you can see with a normal example here. So if I make this frame and then I put an object inside of it, if I put this in the center and then I set this to be um, in the center and set this to be in the center, this um, object is not going to actually change in size. That rectangle is staying the exact same size. Whereas if I put this to be scale and scale, it is going to scale to keep the ratios the exact same. But one thing that we can notice here is that even though the ratio is the same, the distance is not. So here, let's say, um, let's make this object be 418 pixels away from the left. If I then resize this as I'm scaling it, when I check again, this is no longer 418, it is smaller. But when I set this to instead be left and right and top and bottom, what this entire rectangle in the center is actually going to do is resize with the object. So now when I say it's 306 from the top and 249 from the left, no matter how big or small I make this, it's going to maintain that. The number of pixels away from the um, size is going to stay the same. The margins are going to stay consistent. This applies to auto layout as well. It's just a little bit easier to show the example there. Um, but that's the difference between the left and right, center, and scale constraints. I've thrown a lot of words out there right now. Is there anything that's confusing so far? Any questions? Awesome, cool. We have a couple of other things before we get to this demo. Um, the thing that I've mentioned a couple of times now is the idea of nesting, where you can nest auto layout frames within another auto layout frame. It's like turtles all the way down, right? Um, so this allows you to create more com um, complex horizontal and vertical layouts because a lot of the time it's not going to be just one long list. It's not going to be just one long um, menu of items. You're going to have um, a lot of different things that are going to resize and be dynamic in your content. Um, so nesting auto layout frames mechanically looks like a couple different things. One is just you can drag things in. And when you have auto layout, it's going to do that thing with a nice thick blue line to tell you where it's going to land. So if I drag this over, it'll tell me where in between the objects it's going to go when I let go or you can just internally create another auto layout frame as you're going. Um, so the idea of nesting we're going to see in the actual demo, our demo is very similar to this, as you're going to see on here if you're on the slides. Um, but what we're going to be um, talking about is like this whole thought process of like, when do I apply auto layout? When is it actually useful? Um, and how do I kind of visualize it in my head? So going from the smallest item to the largest, if we're thinking about something like a social media feed post, um, we can look at the level of buttons. So each button is its own kind of horizontal auto layout is the idea of resizing that we talked about earlier. So a button is going to resize based on the amount of text that we have inside of it. So that is one level of auto layout. The second level of auto layout that we're going to add is a row of buttons. We want that row of buttons to be spaced the exact same width at all times. So we're always going to have that be horizontally auto layout out as well. So that's the second layer, one container that holds two buttons that resize as you change them. The third level that we can go to is the entire post itself, uh, where we have, let's say, the avatar, the image, the caption, and then that button row. So that's four objects that are encapsulated within one large vertical container. Um, so that's three levels of auto layout. And then at the fourth level, if we have a news feed, so you have an infinite scroll on something like Instagram or Twitter, um, you want all of them to be similarly spaced. You want to be able to kind of change the order of them if, say, you filter them differently. Um, so that entire news feed is going to be a fourth level of auto layout nesting. Any questions? Anything confusing? 
Awesome. We'll go ahead and go right into that. So if you want to follow along with this particular file, I'll show this link again. Uh, if you want to get in the file that I'm in right now, I see there's two people here with me. Uh, this is the link to access what I am working on. So you can see the updates live on your own laptop. Uh, it's figma.fun, not bit.ly, slash capital Y, R, H, lowercase k, capital Z, k. And then if you want to access the copy of the slides that is like your own copy is the link that we normally have. So it's bit.ly slash figma decal dash lex7. That's going to have you make your own copy. And like in the past, because of our publishing issue on the end with Figma, um, it's going to be a slightly older version of these slides. Auto layout keeps updating. They keep remaking it. So we have to keep updating the slides. Um, but the demo itself is going to largely stay the same. So thumbs up if people are good to go with the demo, just to get a sense of where people are. Yay. OK, thank you. Uh, we're going to go ahead to the demo. If you need the link, come and uh, just raise your hand again. I can show it. So we're working in this entire space now, right? So we have this starter kit that has just basic like um, text that we don't have to worry about doing, um, and then this image of a whale of some kind. So in this workspace, what we can look at is what we were talking about earlier. So we can start at that lowest level with the buttons that we'd mentioned. So we can have a piece of text with this button around it. Let's go ahead and make this from scratch. I'm going to. Uh, take this word like and drag it right here. And then I'm going to add auto layout by actually doing shift A with just one item. Figma doesn't necessarily like to show you that you can add auto layout to it, but you can just press shift A. And what that's going to do is add it, add a frame around it that says frame one. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So now I have the word like inside of a frame that says frame one. I have it set auto layout. And if I add a, um, a stroke to this box, I can see it a little bit better. Let's have a two pixel stroke um, on the word like. And I think that's the padding that we had earlier with a little bit more on the side. So it's a little bit more legible. So what I'm going to do to add that horizontal padding is click here and add maybe, let's say, 15. Now we have a little bit more space on the side, so make it a little bit more. Um, and you see that's kind of a re longer rectangle that's inside um, the way that we have here. Let's make this match a little bit more. So I'll just zoom in. Let's make this, let's say, 20 vertically, and then let's say 30 horizontally. 40 horizontally. This is close enough. So now we have this like button that we can actually go ahead and make this a component because we're good designers and we make components along the way. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to rename this by doing a control R and say button. And since this is the main component, let's go put it over here. Take a copy of it by holding alt and then make a few copies of this. Um, the second button said comment and the third one said share. So let's write the word comment. And as you can see, it's going to resize as I type because we've applied auto layout to it no matter how long I type. Um, the rectangle is going to resize. So we have those three buttons here. Um, and then we want these three also to act as their own button row, like we talked about earlier. You can also reference this slide um, right over here. Um, this is going to be kind of the main structure that we're working with. So let's make the three of these a auto layout property as well. So I'm going to go here. It already talks about auto layout because all three of these are their own buttons but I can press the plus sign and it'll add another layer of it. So if we watch what's going on in the left sidebar when I click this, it's added these all to another thing called frame one. And to be a little bit more descriptive, let's call this button row. Okay, are people following too fast, too slow? Anything that I need to go over again? Awesome. Um, if you're working on your own version of the file, you can also look at the demo um, to kind of reveal what the kind of solution is. Um, but here we are with our row. This is called button row. It's got three things inside of it. So now we can do the rest of our content. Um, we can just drag in this image. Uh, this is, I guess, a humpback whale. We have a piece of text that's up here. We can say our own caption. I sure love humpback whales. That's awesome. So we have our caption that we can align with everything here. And then we have um, another thing that kind of is like the button row. There's two different things inside of this avatar section. So we have one image, and then we have one piece of text. We know that these are going to be vertically aligned, and we know that we want them to stay the same distance apart. So we can go ahead and just also make those auto layout. I'm going to drag these two things here. I'm going to put them in the place that I want them, and then I'm going to apply auto layout with Shift A. Um, and now we see that we have this frame one that we can call this maybe avatar and name. Um, and when I open this up, you can see that there's multiple things inside of it, right? Um, this little icon that shows up here, I think, changes depending on the properties that you have set to them, uh, which is very interesting. I think it applies to whatever you have the constraints to right now. And not a lot is changing except for this name, where you see that if I say top aligned, 
um, these two items are going to be sticking to the top. Bottom does the same thing. Center does the same thing. The left and right don't do much because these are uh, horizontally lagged out. Um, but generally, I want them center aligned. So we have this. Now we have these four different things. This uh, avatar name, the caption, the image, and the button row. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's actually just make these kind of like annoyingly spread out so that we see what Autolayer is actually going to automatically do. If I press Shift A, it's going to automatically think because of the way that I set them up that I want them on the right, but I actually want them on the left. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we have this entire feed post, right? So we can rename this whole thing. Let's call it post right here in the bottom left corner. And we have our one post that has um, several levels of auto layout inside of it already. But there is one main discrepancy between this and here. Um, the button row is not spread out the way that is in the example, right? Can anyone remember what I do to make them spread out? That's OK. So we're going to figure it out on our own. So if we go into this button row, uh, what we basically wanted to do is fill up the entire container. So instead of saying uh, packed, we can click on these three dots and go in here and say space between. And then this button row itself, uh, we can then set to basically resize to the shape of the frame itself. So now that we have space between these three objects are going to um, move based on what the button row width is. So now that we've set this all up, it's going to do that for us. So we have our main post. We can make a copy of this, make a second one by pasting it. And then these two things can apply auto layout again by doing shift A. And now we have our entire feed that we can actually just you know copy indefinitely. And I'll move this out here and show you what happens. If you're inside of a, an auto layout property or inside of an auto layout frame, like we can call this news feed, if you copy paste something, it's going to automatically add it within the auto layout constraints you have already. So if I copy this and paste, it's going to automatically have this aligned very nicely. And I can just have this infinite row of whales, I guess, um, no matter what I have. Um, so the auto layout is going to persist across all of this. Let's make this workspace a little bit longer. But yeah, any questions about the demo? Anything that was confusing that you'd like me to go over again? Cool. OK, so off script now, but I wanted to share this other very, very cool example of auto layout that is a little bit more interesting. Um, if you go in Figma community, you can look up this file. It's a pretty popular um, old file that was made pretty early on in Figma. Um, it's called the Monument Valley Level Design Kit. Has anyone played this game before or seen this game? Okay. This game is very, very beautiful. Um, it's a mobile game that's very peaceful. Um, but somebody went ahead and made the game um, level designer in Figma. And the way that they make this all work very nicely is with auto layout. So they've used a couple of fancy plugins in this experiment thing. Um, so there's a couple of questions I won't be able to answer, like why is this frame like a diamond? They use plugins to do all of this. Um, but the core idea that I wanted to get across here is that with these columns and things like that, they actually use auto layout to make sure that they would function by themselves. Um, so all of this ordering is done automatically. If I were to go in here and click on this box and copy it and then paste it, it's going to resize automatically. Everything's going to look really nice. It's not going to have the weird bottom of the box showing or the top of the box showing because everything in here is using auto layout. So I would recommend taking a look at this. It is just very, very fun to play with if you want to copy things around. Uh, if I have these two items stay, I put auto layout on them. And then what I can do, oh my gosh, a new version of auto layout has been added. OK. Maybe this is not a great example right now because this is a bit of an older file. Um, but what I can do here is say first on top. So canvas stacking is something that Figma added recently. This is the idea of like the order that they're listed in the elements uh, responds to if it's like this or like this. So we can change the first on top and last on top properties here. Um, and then I can add more things into this auto layout frame called frame two. And it's going to build it really, really nicely. Um, again, because of everything that we've talked about today. So yeah, uh, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this, I would play with this file. One, because it's just beautifully made. Um, and two, because I think it demonstrates auto layout in a little bit more fun way than like, here's bootleg Twitter. Um, cool. So any other questions before we move on? Sweet. Um, so we're going to talk about this a little bit later as well. But the homework in the lab for this week, I think, are particularly important in doing hands-on practice with auto layout. This is one of those things that I think a lot of designers say, I have no idea how to use, or like, I never learned how to do this. The main thing that I would say with auto layout is just to keep 
experimenting with it as you're doing your own work. If you're working on your midterm, um, feel free to try to play with it. If it doesn't work the first time, that is entirely okay. It didn't work the first time for me. Um, and it takes a little bit of fiddling around to get used to. Um, but once you do, I think it makes a lot of the design process way smoother because you have a lot of these um, basic annoyances like spacing and like resizing kind of abstracted away for you because you've already taken care of it earlier on in your process. Um, so the same way that components take a little bit of time to get used to figuring out when do I make something a component? How do I organize them? Auto layout also has a similar learning curve, but I think it's really worth it. Um, so I would recommend that you play around with it in your own time as well. Um, so with that, I think we can go ahead and take a short break um, until maybe 6.10. And then we're going to come back and talk about content-driven design and plain language. So we'll take a break, get some water if you need. Okay, I think Zoom just crashed. That's fun. Okay, 